Hey guys, Zach here, and welcome back to another action figure review, and today we'll be taking a look at the Bandai Movie Monster Series Baragon 1965. Now, this version of Baragon comes from the 1965 film Frankenstein vs. Baragon, or what I've heard people refer to this movie as Frankenstein Conquers the World, which, unfortunately, I can't give you my thoughts on the movie because I have not seen it yet. Um, I plan on watching this movie in October. Uh, October is when I like to marathon, you know, a bunch of, you know, Godzilla movies and Gamera movies and all that such, and, you know, on, I have, like, a big list of movies I'm gonna watch, and on that list, I do have, uh, Frankenstein vs. Baragon, so, yeah. If by any chance Bandai, if they make a Bandai vinyl of Frankenstein from that movie, then, you know, I'll talk about the movie then, as far as my opinions go, but for right now, yeah, I don't really have, um, I don't have opinions on it, I'm sorry. Um, I have seen Destroy All Monsters, though, which, um, has Baragon as, like, a brief cameo, and I do actually really like Destroy All Monsters, I think it's a good movie, and technically, uh, Baragon was actually in the original Ultraman series, because his suit was actually modified to be, um, monsters in that show, like Naranga and, uh, Gabora, I think? I could be wrong, but regardless, you know, I have seen... You know, movies with Baragon, as far as, like, Showa movies go. I mean, obviously he was in GMK, but as far as, like, Showa Baragon goes, I've seen, like, you know, movies where he's in them, but I haven't seen, like, his debut film, which is Frankenstein vs. Baragon, so, yeah. Anyway, I've been rambling on for far too long now, let's just get into this. Before we take a look at Baragon himself, I just want to take a quick look at the tag he comes with. Now on the front here, we have a nice picture of Baragon from Frankenstein vs. Baragon. Down here, we have uh, Baragon, 1965, as well as the Godzilla 2023 emblem right here. On the back, we have a nice silhouette of, um, well, Baragon's back. You know, uh, Frankenstein vs. Baragon here, movie monster series, Bandai. And on the inside, we have a bunch of Japanese writing, as well as a nice silhouette of Baragon here, so... Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it for the tag. Of course, to start this review, uh, we're going to quickly take a look at the paint. And the painting on this figure, you know, it's nice. You know, it's very simplistic, but it's all it really needs to be. So, let's take a closer look. So, as you can see here, you know, the figure is casted in this uh, brownish material, which I think looks nice. You know, this is, you know, kind of the color he was in the movie. So, I think, um, you know, this coloration for the, you know, material here used. I think this looks good. Uh, his back here, uh, it's very subtle, but there's a little bit of red on his back here, and on, like, half of his tail, it kind of stops, like, there or so, but still, there's a little bit of red here, which I think, um, I think is very nice looking. I think it really makes the detailing pop. Um, we'll talk about the detailing later, though, so I won't, you know, focus too much on that right now, but anyway, uh, the toenails and fingernails are painted this, uh, nice whitish color. Uh, they're airbrushed, and unfortunately, uh, the undersides of the nails are not painted. As you can see there, there we go. Uh, um, yeah, which is a little annoying, but to be fair, you know, I'm going to be displaying my figure like this, and not like this, so it's, you know, it is what it is. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, going to his head here, we can see that his eyes are painted white with black pupils. Uh, his mouth here is painted red, and his teeth are painted the same color as his fingernails and his toenails. And lastly, we have his horn, which is painted the same color as his uh, nails and teeth. And for the most part, I think it looks okay. Uh, the one downside here is that they didn't really paint it all the way through, like, because you can see uh, the base of the horn there. It's not really painted where it should be. Um, not the end of the world. It's very minor, but it's just a little bit. They could have easily just, you know paint it to the base there, but, you know, I digress. You know, and that's pretty much it for the painting on this figure. Um, like I said, it's very simplistic, but I think it gets the job done pretty well. It's all it really needs to be, and, yeah, the painting on this figure, I think, looks good. So the painting here, I'd say gets a pass. Now, we're going to take a quick look at the articulation, and, you know, normally I'd say it's a Bandai vinyl. There's not a lot of articulation, and... That is true, but in this case, it kind of annoys me. Well, let's take a closer look why. So as you can see here, you know, the arms can move 360. 
as well as both of the legs here. And the tail can move 360. Normally, um, Bandai, they kind of glue the tails in place, which you know, I don't really get why they do that, but you can actually move the tail here, and it's actually really cool. And we even have a swivel at the head. Just kidding, we don't. Like, why would you glue this? You know, like, there's a very noticeable seam here, right? So you'd think, okay, you can move it, but you can see there, there's a little bit of, like, glossiness. They glued the head shut, or not shut, but they, like, glued it in place, which I don't get that. It would have been really nice to have that, you know, it would have been nice to move the head around, especially because, you know, when they glued it, my figure, he's not really looking head on. He's kind of, he's kind of looking to the side there, and, it, like, it's not center, and it's really, like, why would you glue this? I don't get, why would you glue this? This is, like, really frustrating. I know, like, I know real world problems, but, like, still, like, if I want him to look around, like, I, I want him to look around. And even, like, it's crooked, too, and it's, like, I don't, I don't get that. I don't get why they glued his head. I think that is very frustrating, but I digress. Um, but, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the articulation. Other than the glued-on head, for some reason, I don't get why, um, you know, it's a Bandai vinyl, so the articulation is still pretty solid, but, you know, because that, um, glued-on head is still kind of annoying to me, I'm gonna say the articulation here gets three quarters of a pass. Now, we're gonna quickly talk about the sculpting on this figure, and the sculpting here, you know, I think, um, looks very good, you know, I think, uh, all the proportions here look right, you know, the limbs aren't too long or too short, the head isn't too big, the tail isn't too short, you know? I think, um, you know, I think this is, like, you know, pretty much one-to-one -to, -one to what we see in, you know, Frankenstein vs. Baragon. I mean, like I said at the beginning of the video, I haven't seen that movie, so maybe there are some slight differences. I'm not sure, but based on, like, the images I've seen, you know, from Baragon from that movie, um, yeah, I think, um, the sculpting here looks pretty accurate, and, yeah, I think it does a really good job capturing the likeness of Baragon from you know, Frankenstein versus Baragon, so, yeah, uh, the sculpting on this figure, very solid, so the sculpting here, I'd say definitely gets a pass. Now, we're going to take a look at the detailing, and the detailing on this figure, I think, looks very nice, so let's take a closer look at that. So, starting off with the head here, we can see all the uh, scales and all the little wrinkles and creases in the face here, I think are detailed very nicely, and even the ears here, I think, have a fair bit of detailing as well. I'll go into the neck here. Again, just a lot of, uh, you know, I like little creases here. And even like all the little bumps here, you know, I think looks really nice. And what's really cool is that, um, they actually detailed, um, little like eye holes from the actual suit itself, which they didn't need to do, but they did. And honestly, I think that's a really nice touch. Again, all of the folds throughout this figure, like in the neck here, really gives off that like guy in a suit feel. And I think it looks really cool. So yeah, uh, going to the arms here, you know, just a lot of great detailing here, the little bumps and all the little creases and wrinkles and all that, you know, looks pretty good. Uh, the front of the figure, I think uh, the detailing here looks really nice, because like the creases like at the, you know, near the crotch here, again, just a lot of great detailing, uh, excuse me, detailing, uh, again, really gives off that, um, that guy in a suit feel, and I think that looks really nice here, you know, throughout the figure. Again, just uh, more like wrinkles and like bumps throughout. And, like in the legs here, especially the legs, there are so many like creases here. It's like, it looks really nice. It's really well detailed. And I know, broken record, but it really like does give off that like guy in a rubber suit feel. It looks great. Now going to the tail here again. A lot of really nice detailing on the side here. As well as the underside too. The underside looks great. And even the back here has a lot of really nice detailing as well. You know, it looks really nice. And when I mentioned the painting earlier, like, yeah, there's a little bit of, like, red on the back here, as you can tell. I think that, um, that really does make the detailing here look nicer. You know, if it wasn't painted, like, it still would have looked nice, but I think the painting here really, you know, makes the detailing here pop. So, yeah. And that's pretty much it for the detailing on this figure. Uh, the detailing here is very solid, so, yeah. Uh, the detailing on this figure, I'd say definitely gets a pass. Now, we'll do some size comparisons. Uh, here we have the uh, Bandai Creation 
GMK Godzilla. It'd be nice if they made a new movie monster series of that design. That'd be really nice. Um, here we have the Bandai Island Angiris. I forget what he's called exactly, but he is a Bandai vinyl of Angiris from the 90s, so that's all I know. You know, of course, to fill out this original GMK, you know, roster here, because originally for GMK, instead of it being Baragon, Mothra, and Ghidorah, um, it was going to be... Ma or it was going to be Baragon, Angiris, and Varen. So, of course, here we have the Bandai Movie Monster Series Varen. Oh, wait, I, um... Yikes, I actually didn't buy that figure. Um... Alright, tell you what, uh, to fill that role, uh, here we have Macho Man Randy Savage. And, of course, here we have some hand sanitizer. And here we have Dr. Billy Grant. So at the end of the day, should you get this figure? I'd say yes. You know, a couple of minor things. Uh, the only two, like, real issues I have with this figure. Uh, it would have been nice if the horn was painted all the way, and it's really annoying that the head was glued on, but honestly, those are all nitpicks because, you know, like, overall, I think that this is a very nice figure, you know? It's no X Plus or any, like, high-quality, like, $1,000 statue or anything like that, but... You know, for a little Baragon figure, I think that this is a, you know, very nice figure. So, I do recommend that you pick this guy up. Um, as far as price tags go, he's actually not too expensive. Uh, Hobby Link Japan has him for, like, just over 20 bucks, which is honestly not that bad because, you know, this is a, you know, pretty nice quality figure. Um, you do have to pay for shipping, though. So, there is that, but, you know, without shipping, this guy is about, like, 21, 23 bucks, which is not bad at all. So, yeah. For the price tag, this is a nice figure, and I definitely recommend that you guys pick him up. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, that is it for today. Have a great rest of your week, and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Zek out.